Hi everyone, I'm Steve Matchett and I am involved in the podcast for Euro Prestige Imports this evening. And it's a great honor to be here because I'm joined by Martin Steger. Martin, thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure. Now, the reason that we're having this conversation is because we both worked in Formula One for our sins. You were involved in Formula One with Porsche in 62? Actually, uh, 62 is when I got introduced to Formula One with Porsche. And I was at that time still going to school, but went full time with Porsche in 1965, did an apprenticeship under Dr. Porsche. Okay for three and a half years. And uh, in 1966, I was reintroduced to the Formula One car that I saw race at the Solitude race track near Stuttgart. Yeah. And uh, they finished one, two, and it really uh, perked my interest. When I started with Porsche, the one thing I learned, when you apply for a job, you don't tell them that you want to become a race car driver because then you'll never get the job. They, they don't want to hire race car drivers. They want a, a blue collar guy that uh, wants to learn a trade. Yeah. And um, so I made sure that I did not mention that. But I was reintroduced to the car that I saw race in the Solitude in 1962 and 1966 when the car was basically retired and they were looking for some cheap help. So you go back to the apprentice program. They worked very cheap. And uh, they asked us to prepare the car for the museum, take it apart, clean it up and so forth. But it was four of us and we were determined. Our first priority was, we want to hear that car run. Before we go any further, Martin, with, with your story of the restoration of this car, let's inform our gentle viewer and listener which car we're talking about because it is a very, special car, not only in the history of Formula One, but also in the history of Porsche as a constructor. Yes. And it was the Porsche 804. Yes. That was introduced in 1962. And the rules changed in 1961. The FIA made a regulation change which allowed Porsche to get excited by the idea of entering as a constructor. Yes. They basically manufactured four cars. Yeah which two of them raced, and um, the race car drivers was Dan Gurney, who won the race in France. Rouen? Rouen, yeah. And I think the reason they won is there were a lot of DNFs, and uh, Porsche just happened to hang in there and ended up finishing the race first. That kind of put Porsche on the map. Nobody ever thought that would be that successful that quickly. Yeah. To uh, have that kind of a performance out of a 1.5 liter eight cylinder. So it was a high revving engine. It was a high revving engine and uh, very reliable. I don't recall that they had too many DNFs because of uh, engine failure. Did they, was it air cooled the engine or were they using any water jackets? Air air, air cooled engine. Yeah. And uh, I couldn't believe when someone told me that we have one of those in Charlotte. And I said, can't be, there's no way. Maybe they don't know what an 804 is. Right. And uh, so this friend of mine said, you gotta come and see this car. So of course, uh, didn't wanna wait any longer, came down to saw it myself. And here it is, a beautiful replica. Somebody really put a lot of time and effort into it. Yeah. And uh, basically duplicated the car that once was very competitive. I'm fascinated by your time with Porsche back in the 60s because I've read Al Francis' Racing Mechanic book, which was from the 1950s, and I've written about Formula One in my time in the 1990s. You were there in 65 working for Porsche. You remember the 804 being a competitive car. Yes. How many folks did Porsche have on their Formula One project in its entirety back in 19... Let's say when this car was produced for 62. In 62, I was introduced to the car, but I was not working on the car okay. until 1966. Right. And I basically, I worked in work two. Work one is where our racing team was, yeah. the factory racing team. And uh, don't know how many people actually were involved in the F1 program at the time. And of course, later on in 1966, when we had the pleasure of getting the car ready for the museum, that was basically my part as far as Formula One. My interest uh, became uh, very intense when we went to that racetrack in Solitude and uh, from far away you could smell that castor lar. Yeah, it's so so distinct smell, that sweet smell. Yeah. And uh, the heart was pounding faster and faster. And you bring up an an interesting point that, that sticks with me as well all the while is there is a very distinctive set of aromas to a racetrack. Yes. 
whether it's the heat of the tires, whether it's the heat of the engine, it's something that you, as a viewer, tends to get lost. There's a lot of emotions attached to racing, but when you're there and you have those emotions come back from seeing the car. Yes. Yeah. And that period of success with Porsche as a constructor, I understand that Porsche pulled out of Formula One at the end of 62 because they were just spending so much money, right? It was a very it, it, expensive. It was definitely a financial uh, thing. You know, Porsche at that time was a fairly small factory. Porsche basically uh, wanted to get some advertisement to, to promote their product, their 356s, their then starting 911s in 63. Yeah. It's a point that's worth mentioning. Porsche's move away from Formula One, but still want to be involved in motorsport because it's, um, it's a great way of advertising one's product. If you were successful, like Mercedes are now in contemporary days, oh, Mercedes were back in the 1950s, but sure. now if you look at Mercedes' success now, it is a great advertisement for their, pro for, their, for their cars, for their product. Hey, look what we're doing. But if you are unsuccessful in racing, it can backfire, Absolutely yes. Absolutely it can. Yeah. Yeah. I love talking to folks that are involved in racing and Formula One. Um, well, it's a great sense of um, communal had, spirit. I'm going to have to say, Martin, that was, that was tremendous I, fun. I enjoyed it. Yeah. And uh, I love to hear more about your stories. I've loved every moment of this podcast talking to you, Martin. Guys, it's been great fun. Big thanks to Martin Steger for all your stories about Porsche. Thank you. For now, take care.